We are live, thank you. Uh, we're uh, at Bowdoin Park uh, in the town of Poughkeepsie. There's a small sliver of Bowdoin Park that is in the town of Wappinger. I don't know if it's a small sliver, but it's a, por por a portion of, uh, that's in the town of Wappinger. Uh, I'm here uh, this afternoon with Parks Director Sandy Washburn. Uh, we're going to get to uh, some of the park activity going on in Dutchess County, a lot of exciting things. Uh, but uh, we are going to begin today with um, uh, another COVID update. This will be what I hope will be, <laughs> I expect will be our last COVID update. Meaning um, after uh, all these months together, uh, since the governor uh, uh, rescinded and lifted the state of emergency a week ago, uh, we are going to today conclude our regular COVID town hall um, uh, forums. Uh, we have been at it uh, together since last March, uh, uh, March of 2021, uh, 2020 that is. And um, I, I know that we all have been through a lot together. Uh, businesses shuttered, families uh, separated, uh, kids missing out on so many opportunities, uh, loved ones no longer uh, with us. Uh, and uh, we have attempted to use these town hall forums as a means to provide you some ongoing information uh, to answer your questions and hopefully provide a little bit of uh, comfort and, uh, uh, and, and some guidance. Uh, we have been at it weekly, sometimes twice a week, as you uh, likely remember, for over a year. Uh, this now represents our 74th town hall forum, COVID-19 uh, related town hall forum since we began in March of 2020. It also represents the 185th town hall meeting that I've held since becoming county executive in 2012. Uh, and just because uh, we uh, uh, we uh, are concluding our COVID um, uh, town hall forums. That doesn't mean uh, we won't be back again. Uh, our hope is uh, to reconvene our, our, our in-person town halls, probably with a virtual component, uh, since we've become pretty good at this. Um, uh, one, one upside, I suppose. Um, at, uh, we, we hope to res resume our town hall meetings, uh, in-person town hall meetings, otherwise, uh, uh, in the fall of this year to focus uh, a little bit on what we expect will be the, uh, the delivery of the 2021 uh, county budget. So a little bit, of, give you a, a couple months off and then we'll get right back at it. Let's talk though uh, a little bit about our, our data so we uh, have uh, that to reflect on. Uh, since the beginning of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, here in New York and Dutchess County, uh, we've conducted 791,592 5 tests. 29,508 confirmed total cases. Uh, that um, uh, includes 56 current active cases. Uh, now, just for reference, that's 33 additional cases. So the 29,508 is 33 additional cases since the last time we got together two weeks ago. 56 current active cases is 20 cases less than we got together uh, than when we got together two weeks ago. We have one individual hospitalized uh, in Dutchess County. That is down three since two weeks ago. Uh, and uh, we are now at 446 of our neighbors have succumbed to the virus. That is uh, sadly one additional death uh, since uh, the time we were together two weeks ago. Our positivity rate now is 0.28%. Uh, so 0.28%, that's as of June the 28th. Uh, and we've been hovering at this um, uh, between 0.5 and 0.2 over uh, the course of the last uh, two weeks. Uh, just as a reference, uh, vaccine uh, distribution continues. We, we hope you choose to be vaccinated. We know that the vaccine is effective. We know it's effective because we've seen the results. Uh, and of course, we understand science. Uh, the vaccine, uh, vaccines are effective. We hope you choose to be vaccinated. That is your choice. Uh, but as of today, 67.6% of Dutchess County's adults have received at least one of their two doses, uh, if you've gotten the two dose shot. That's uh, 169,432 uh, Dutchess County residents. 67.6% .6 of adults have received at least their first uh, of the vaccine series. And that is 52.3% of the county, of all county residents have completed their vaccine series at 153,633. Uh, individuals. Uh, and uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, most of the COVID-19 related restrictions have been lifted. The governor still did through the health department impo impose a mask mandate uh, to mirror the CDC guidance. So uh, we, we have advised 
uh, that we don't believe the mask mandate is necessary, that we encourage people to make the smart choice for themselves, but uh, currently uh, there is still a mask mandate in uh, school settings, so summer school, uh, and transportation settings, healthcare settings, and uh, um, uh, criminal justice or corrections uh, facilities, and a few others. That's based on the governor's health department order uh, that does uh, remain in effect. So um, uh, as uh, uh, we learn more, uh, and if there is uh, additional information, we'll be sharing that with you. Uh, we did learn uh, yesterday that one individual in Ulster County uh, had tested positive uh, for COVID with the Delta variant. Uh, we'll be very clear, as we have said from day one, uh, if there are cases around us, there are cases among us. And it is uh, without doubt uh, likely and logical that uh, we have seen the Delta variant uh, in Dutchess County. Uh, it has not yet been tested and identified, uh, but the way the, in which the state conducts its tests and the, and the testing is done, uh, these are random samples. Uh, and so uh, it is likely the Delta variant is within our community. Uh, it is more easily trans, uh, transmitted. Uh, it is uh, in certain instances more severe, uh, but we also do know uh, in particular uh, the double dose uh, vaccines seem to be uh, effective. Uh, and certainly all of the doses, all the vaccines uh, have uh, at, at currently are proving uh, that even if you were to contract uh, the virus, that it would be in a much, much less uh, severe condition. That's really the goal here, right? To, to limit transmission, but to ensure that if you happen to contract the virus, uh, it's going to be in a, in a much less severe uh, situation and then, and then your body uh, will be able to over, overcome it. So it's important to know that. We'll keep you posted as information becomes uh, available. I do want to note uh, 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 last week, uh, the New York State Association of Counties uh, presented uh, the uh, presented to the public, uh, and uh, we announced uh, that the uh, Association of Counties has developed uh, and published a book, uh, "Our Darkest Hours." This is uh, a, a chronicling of uh, county leadership uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, county governments across the country and across the state of New York course on the front line of that of that uh, response uh, the Association of Counties is a means of sort of chronicling our experience uh, both for uh, current benefit but more importantly uh, for future county leaders uh, to be able and the public to see uh, both uh, successes missteps uh, and lessons learned commission the book uh, and uh, you can find it uh, at uh, a number of locations including online at Amazon uh, in, in July uh, so the association uh, has commissioned this book. We do want you to know that um, uh, the book is not at all intended uh, to be a celebration of any kind. It's merely a chronicling uh, of activity and events uh, faced by public health departments across the state and county governments uh, and to acknowledge those lives uh, that uh, were lost. Every dollar uh, that happens to be uh, uh, collected uh, will be donated to food banks uh, here and across New York State. And so uh, no one is profiting in any way, uh, and, the, uh, and the book is meant to be a, a chronicle of activity and, and a reflection uh, on uh, both lessons learned, uh, successes, and, and missteps, and I think that's, uh, that's important. Uh, we're here with Sandy Washburn. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How great. are you? I'm just ducky. <laughs> what is ducky? Ducky. Oh. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I won't, I won't uh, stray any further than that. Uh, we have a lot of uh, activities going on in county parks, and I uh, wanted to spend some time, Sandy, talking to you a little bit. Uh, we're also going to invite in a few moments uh, uh, County Legislator Joey, uh, Joe Cavasini, who represents the town of Wappinger, also happens to be a, a town historian, uh, and uh, we'll have him uh, come in and talk a little bit about what's going on uh, in county government. But let's talk a little bit about park activity. Uh, we just held our uh, Office for the Aging picnic right here, a okay. drive through picnic here at Bowdoin Park, uh, and we are scheduled to have our Think Differently Field Day. What do you know about that? Fitness and Field Day. Uh, we are teaming up with Think Differently, of course, and so excited to be host uh, of the event this year here at Bowdoin on July 22nd from 11 until 2. A variety of activities and stations, fitness uh, activities planned throughout the park. I know Tony and Suzanne are, are working through all of those details. And I get briefed every so often on all the fun things that are coming. Um, but I know that RSVP is currently underway. Uh, really important that we get all of our participating agencies and all of our uh, partner groups to go ahead and, and respond to that through duchessny.gov slash tdfieldday. So it's going to be a wonderful event here and we're excited to have them back. 
So this is uh, this is great. We had, of course, postponed last year our Think Differently initiative. Uh, it's been endorsed by 100 communities across the state of New York, about a dozen across the country. Uh, but it's an opportunity for us again uh, to celebrate uh, everyone of every ability uh, and to bring people together uh, at uh, at a great uh, county park for the purposes of of, of celebrating uh, uh, the achievements of every everyone, regardless of ability. And I don't need to tell you this, Mark. It's it's such an inspirational day always. Yeah. Um, when we have our friends uh, all come together and just uh, show what they can do, the smiles, the joy, the camaraderie, and all of the families together. It really is just a wonderful, wonderful family activity, and we're, we're just proud to have it here. Well, we're, we're glad to uh, continue the tradition and, and to restart it. Uh, another one we're kicking off is uh, some, some music and, and, and a movie at the park. Music and a movie, that's going to be... Um, what, what I wanted to mention today is at Wilcox, and we have some wonderful things happening on that weekend. The movie and music and movie is August 20th. Um, we do have music starting at 6 o'clock. Vito Petrosito and the Little Rock Quartet will be entertaining before the movie starts. And if you know Vito's music, you certainly know you're in for a wonderful treat. So I've been around for a long time. Vito has, I think, performed with about 100 different bands. Correct. In fact, he may even perform with all 100 at the same time, for all I know. Yes. Uh, but uh, great, uh, uh, a great uh, musician. And uh, great, I haven't, I haven't heard this current band, but we're... You know, Great talent, ahead. and he was on board with us right away, um, as was the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, which I, I know you are very, very fond of, and uh, the wonderful folks there are giving weekend discount air show coupons to all who attend the oh, event, great. so they'll uh, be there with us. We are going to be showing at 8.30 a movie feature that evening, Yogi Bear. And now we'll be able to, you know, host a larger group than we could last year um, with uh, as things are opening up. And we're just thrilled that we'll be able to have Yogi Bear on the big screen. And it's a free event. Um, we do just ask people to register so that we're prepared sure. and um, just to join us for just a wonderful time up at Wilcox. And I do want to mention, um, you know, we're continuing to make improvements uh, at that campground. And with a free game area now, a family game area that has replaced the um, mini golf course. Yeah. Uh, a lot of wonderful family activities to do there. Our boat rentals are back up and running oh, this great. year. Paddle, paddle boats. boats and rowboats are, are open and that's uh, just being really well received. And our campground is this weekend we only have actually two available tent sites. It's completely booked out for the 4th of July holiday, but there are other weekends and other dates available. So come check out great. all the great improvements we're making at the campground. So again, though, Friday, August the 20th at Wilcox in Milan, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, music with Vito, Petrocito, and Little Rock Band, 8.30 p.m. thereabouts. Uh, depending on how dark it is, yes. uh, you'll be showing a movie on the big screen, uh, yeah. Yogi Bear. Um, I was going to do my Yogi Bear impersonation, but I think I'm not. I'm just no? Not. No. no, no. Uh, but uh, <laughs> a lot of activities going on at, at county parks, uh, and uh, uh, we invite you to, to, to take advantage of them. Uh, whether it's Dutchess Stadium, a uh, great yes. uh, home of the uh, New York Yankees affiliate Hudson Valley Renegades. Uh, of course, here at Bowdoin Park, uh, the water splash pad is getting a lot of use. Splash pad getting a lot of use right now, so we just encourage people to come out and join that. We do have a writer's hike coming up. Okay. I'm not sure if you've heard about that. I we haven't. Have partnered Go ahead. with the Poughkeepsie Public Library District. We will be hosting our very first writer's hike here at Bowdoin on Saturday, July 24th. Um, beginning at 9.30. You can register, you do need to register for that actually, so we can have supplies prepared for you. And you do that through poklib.org. P-O-K-L-I-B. Yes. Poklib. Kipsy Library. Okay. So um, that's just a wonderful uh, event for us. And we are heading to the fair. I, I heard this. Uh, well, I'm going to be at the fair. I know. Why are you going to be at the fair? We are going to be at the fair. One, because we absolutely love the fair. Two, we want to partner with our friends at Think Differently. We will be sharing a tent mm -hmm. uh, space uh, and setting up some uh, sensory activities for the kids and just sharing as much information as we can about all the great things happening in our county parks. So we'll have uh, some fun giveaways. Great. From parks, we'll have all of our literature and information and sharing about our park naturalist programming. You know, camp starts next week, yeah, so we're all about summer programs right now. So we really just wanted to put ourselves out into the community in, in such a large way and, and hopefully um, share what we offer in parks and get a whole new group of users to come and, and visit. Great. Well, so. if you're watching, you have a question, just write it on the uh, comment section below the live stream. Uh, and the uh, on, on our Facebook feed, 
Uh, but a lot of things going on at, uh, uh, at County Park. Sandy, we're very grateful to you and the team. Uh, and uh, the place looks beautiful. We have a lot of, all of our parks look really, really very good. They do, and I just want to uh, send a special shout out to our parks maintenance uh, yeah. team. You know, it's a, it's a, not a huge crew, but they're mighty and certainly working really hard right now yeah. and um, filling in a few gaps and keeping all of the parks looking beautiful and staffed. And they're just so welcoming. We do get an awful lot of positive feedback sure. on the crew. You know, they're the unsung heroes behind the scenes, but yeah. without them, we can't do anything that we do here. So, well, thanks for mentioning that. We did have a little bit of sadness too. We certainly. Uh, one of our park staff uh, did uh, uh, did pass away. Um, um, uh, I, I suppose peacefully, but but tragically. Yes. And um, and uh, we certainly extend our, our appreciation and thoughts and prayers to his family. But uh, yes. we want to mention him and his work. Yes, Jim Clifford, very yeah. special uh, member of our staff. He uh, worked here as a senior maintenance mechanic. Worked out of Bowdoin, but really um, became known uh, for his presence at Quiet Cove Park yeah. and certainly uh, known by many families last year as uh, our Santa Claus yeah. at our holiday illumination event. So uh, he is uh, sorely missed yeah. and we're certainly adjusting to that each day and it's not an easy adjustment but his lovely wife Doreen and his daughter Grace um, you know are in our hearts every day and Jim will continue to be with us well into the future. No, absolutely. And, no, thank so you th for that. And, and thanks for mentioning him. And if you haven't mm -hmm. been, Quiet Cove is beautiful. What well, Cox Park is doing uh, is, is a lot of activities, as you mentioned, of course, here at Bowdoin, uh, Dutchess Stadium, and any and, and either the Dutchess Rail Trail or the Harlem Valley Rail Trail, all looking yes. looking pretty good. Doing our best. And okay. So we just invite everyone to get out and enjoy it. Enjoy the summer with us. Um, before you know it, we'll be hopping into fall and yeah. all the great things that will come then. So. Well, we'll keep you busy. You keep us busy. Absolutely. And uh, we for, encourage folks thanks to... Thanks for being back in the park. Uh, hey, absolutely. Is there a, oh, uh, oh, good. I'll, I'll be happy to answer that question. Okay. Uh, so anyway, thanks very much. Thank we you. appreciate it, Sandy. I'm going to invite uh, County Legislator Joey Cavasini to join us. Or Joseph, I should say. Yeah. I don't want to call him Joey. Um, uh, Joe, as you sit down, you probably don't know much about this, but there's a question that I'm going to answer. Uh, the question is interestingly asked. It was, why was the nonpartisan redistricting committee killed by the majority in the legislature? Did you kill it, Joe? I did not. No, you didn't. So uh, the majority of the county legislature didn't do anything uh, of the sort, and I do want to address that. Um, so uh, uh, in a, in a uh, all, I think it was unanimous, but a bipartisan effort, uh, the county amended the county charter uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago. Uh, to uh, include independent redistricting and redistricting as you know you represent a county legislative district yes. uh, is Fifteen. done once every 10 years yep. uh, that redistricting uh, would be underway once uh, the state uh, uh, excuse me the federal government releases the census numbers we don't expect those census numbers until late August even into September um, so currently there there is no um, uh, there are no census numbers to work on I, um, I do know uh, because the, the commission is independent of both uh, me and functionally uh, independent of the legislature, but it does respond to both uh, the minority and majority leaders. Um, so what happened, Eric, uh, is that one of the original appointees uh, of the commission um, is an elected official and didn't disclose that. And, and whether or not that should have been identified uh, by someone else beforehand or not is, is, is no longer it's material. It's unfortunate. Yeah, so, so the way the commission works is that the, the Democrats pick two people, the Republicans pick two people. One of those original appointees uh, by, the, by the Democratic minority leader, not, not, not a criticism, it's just this individual is an elected official. Um, uh, was unaware probably to her, the, the appointee, uh, and then ultimately uh, to, uh, to the body that he serves as a member of a school board. Uh, school boards are by, by definition elected, uh, and therefore he is ineligible to serve. The problem era came that the original, uh, so, so as I understand it, and I received a, uh, I read a memo uh, that was circulated to the legislature, um, by being one of the founding members of the commission, those first four, two Republican, two Democrat, they meet and select from a list that I had to provide them, yep. they select, select three names. And those three people then make the total seven commission. Exactly. Because one of the initial appointees who then selects the subsequent appointees was not eligible, the commission by the county attorney's opinion, and I believe it's been, it's been reinforced by others, but that the, the commission wasn't 
fully established and therefore couldn't meet its obligation meaning that just because they went through the exercise of voting on these three people because the one of the first uh, appointees was ineligible the entire the, the appointment wasn't on it wasn't wasn't legitimate and therefore they didn't meet the deadlines so all that's going to happen Eric um, and I'm, I, I understand the desire from some perhaps not you uh, but from some to make everything partisan and political what what, what I understand is, is going to happen is that uh, the seven members dissolve and the commission uh, then um, would be reestablished again by the majority leader and the minority leader they would pick two people um, presumably could be any of the eligible members um, and then those four people will select another three people who could be among the the three that were already there and then they'll get back to work um, so that's as I understand it um, what's uh, what's occurring and the redistricting process will will move forward in an independent yes. way but here's the most important thing because I, I do take issue with the, um, the politic of, of it all um, I was very much an advocate of independent reapportionment uh, the majority um, uh, uh, voted uh, uh, again the majority supported it the Democrats a minority supported it it is universally accepted yes and and we wanted to proceed independently but imagine for a moment if an ineligible member uh, was simply replaced let's say for a moment that that we just ignored the fact that 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 the commission wasn't totally it wasn't it wasn't convened appropriately and this commission draws maps and somebody who doesn't like the maps goes to court because by the way most of the time these maps are challenged legally and don't you think one of the first things they're going to say is the commission was never gener was never created uh, appropriately and an ineligible member select the member and therefore the, the very legitimacy of the maps become uh, in question um, now the county attorney has articulated uh, what um, uh, he believes are the reasons for dissolving and then and then ultimately uh, moving forward with reestablishing the commission and sort of a, a, a resetting the playing field and moving forward that's his position listen everybody has an opinion if you have a lawyer out there if there's a lawyer watching I'm pretty sure he or she has two opinions on the matter uh, and for a hundred or hundred fifty dollars an hour I'm sure they'd be willing to give it to us um, but the end result is um, as I understand it one of the members was never one of the original members was ineligible therefore the commission could not have been constituted in the time frame established and therefore it didn't it, it has to be dissolved and you start again but the end result will be independent redistricting will proceed I hope that whoever comes forward when you check the box that says you are not an elected official that you are actually not an elected <laughs> official and that you meet the other requirements because the goal here is to find people who are not involved in politics yep. partisan politics not employees of the government yep not involved in party politics mm -hmm. and not elected officials so that you don't have the external influences over their decision Absolutely. did that sound about right to you that's perfect and it's crucial that that commission get back to functioning as soon yeah. as possible right it's the right uh, way yeah, yeah. and, and the they'll right function way. independently and there'll be independent districts and, and and all within the right amount of time they'll have them drawn they'll be presented somebody may sue because that's what they do but at the very least we won't have the underlying concerns absolutely uh, Joe if you do have a question write it in the comments section below the live feed um, and, and, and happy to try to get to it um, Joe you were with us for the opening of uh, the Duchess Community College aviation yes experiential hangar very at uh, the Hudson Valley Regional Airport uh, in the town of Wappinger yes do you represent this or does uh, uh, Paoloni Lisa Paoloni represents that area yes well what did you think of it speak up so they can well, hear you <laughs> well I'm very excited because the town of Wappinger we have a uh, college institution back within our boundaries again we used to have DCC South uh, which now is in Fishkill uh, DCC at Fishkill the old Duchess Mall uh, so the town of Wappinger we're very excited to have this new uh, impressive facility within our town boundaries. Uh, and, and this is not just a normal college institute, I would say. This is really a great incubator to streamline uh, people uh, going into the aviation field, going right into actually obtaining jobs and yeah. working with big airlines and things like that. So this is this is huge and we're very happy to have it. And um, historically the Wappinger legislators have been very supportive of the airport and the yes. investment in the airport. When we began as, as, I, as I did as county executive in 2012, uh, the county uh, subsidized uh, operations uh, of the airport, taxpayers did. Oh, yeah. And over the course of the last decade we've been able to cut that by 70 percent. So Frank, we don't, we don't support, but taxpayers don't pay for any of the operational expense of the airport and we've made major investments by partnering with SUNY and Dutchess Community College and this is a great pathway uh, to employment 
um, this, uh, this aviation um, uh, education program and the airframe technician mechanics program uh, will uh, launch, sorry for the word, take off, <laughs> uh, will take off uh, in, um, uh, in the middle of August. So August 16th and August 23rd, uh, students should look. Uh, I think they're, they're start, they filled up their first uh, semester, uh, but there will be more opportunities as well. Uh, and uh, it was a great day, very exciting, uh, and just a great uh, hangar. Now, we, uh, um, you know, they're teaching people to fly, so they have um, uh, flight simulators, yes, Joe, and, and I understand you tried one of the flight simulators. <laughs> Um, how did you do? Uh, it, it was, I wasn't too successful. My first uh, flight, my first takeoff, uh, I did try out one of the simulators, which uh, was amazing for the students to use. And uh, I, I did crash within the first uh, five minutes of takeoff, or five seconds of takeoff, I should say. But I won't be getting behind the wheel of any plane anytime soon. <laughs> no, you won't. Okay. Well, Joey, um, uh, some of our watchers um, are not um, apparently... Um, uh, happy with my answer, so I will. I will again say, Eric, uh, it was not the majority or minority of the legislature that did anything. No, did not come uh, it is, in fact, the county attorney who, by law and charter, is required to provide the legal advice uh, to the commission, and. Um, he, that, that was, it wasn't political. <laughs> uh, in fact, all but the one individual can be reappointed. Karen asked um, or said something that ends with, this is bogus, but says, so replace and reconvene. Karen, yes, that is exactly what's happening. Replace and reconvene. They can't replace the, the just replace the, the first appointee, as I understand it, because that first appointee selected the others. And that is the issue. If you're going to be totally independent, you can't have, it'd be like saying, let's put it this way. Would you be okay if we found out that one of the appointees was the chairman of the Republican Party of Dutchess County? We didn't know it. We put him on there. Mm -hmm. And he or she selected, with the others, the three non-party non, uh, uh, selected individuals. Would you be okay with that? Probably not. So what you have to do, based on the county attorney's position, and again, I'm sure lawyers have opinions, uh, but the county attorney is by charter and law the, the re agency that's supposed to give the con uh, give the give the uh, uh, legal consult. So it is not fair to say that the majority, and I did not say the minority, uh, dissolved the commission. By its very nature, the commission didn't constitute itself in the proper fashion because one of the original members was not eligible to be appointed, and therefore the actions subsequent were never taken appropriately, and therefore were were, in, were, were, were ineligible and dissolved. But to Karen's point, yes, the, what they're saying and what the county attorney is saying is replace and reconvene the commission, which will happen. They'll be replaced. It could be some of the original members. It could be new members. Uh, again, through the independent process prescribed under the charter uh, that you voted for, and that those in individuals, independent of party influence, political influence, elected influence, or any other influence, will convene and conduct the independent reapportionment. It will proceed. That's the explanation. I'm sorry if you don't like my answer, but it is the answer, and I'm just trying to give it to you as straight as I can. Uh, and and that's and believe me, um, I don't believe there's anybody in this process who who wants to back away from independent reapportionment. So uh, independent reapportionment will continue. It just has to be done in accordance with the law prescribed in the charter and the referendum that the public voted on. Is that yes. Clear enough. That is okay. Uh, so one other. Uh, so so we were there for the opening yeah. of the uh, aviation hangar. Uh, just yesterday, I got to meet the new president of oh. Dutchess Community College, Dr. Peter Jordan. Dr. Jordan, a um, uh, very impressive uh, individual, uh, and is looking forward to taking over uh, the uh, helm at Dutchess Community College. He has some very exciting things uh, that he's going to be focused on, but we welcome Dr. Jordan, and, uh, and, and, and I, I encouraged him, and he was more than ready uh, and, and, and had planned. Uh, to do a lot of outreach. So I think you'll be seeing Dr. Jordan in and around the community, he wants to spend some time reaching out to folks. Um, did you attend Duchess or were you a Marist? No, I'm, I'm Marist all the way. Top to yeah. bottom Marist? Yes. yes. Uh, you don't like Duchess? No, I love Duchess. Oh, okay. I am so happy that we have Duchess Community College within the town of Wabinger and in Duchess. And I'm happy to welcome our new president, too. Great. It's very exciting. I'm glad. Thank you, Joe. Yes. So we were here a little bit earlier for our, our, our most recent Office for the Aging Senior Picnic. Uh, we um, are scheduled for next Wednesday at Stissing Mountain High School. I don't expect to see you in Pine Plains. No. Uh, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back with you sometime soon. Uh, we have Office for the Aging has opened uh, nearly all of our Office of our Senior Friendship Center. So, Amenia Beekman, excuse me, Amenia Beacon, East Fishkill, Millerton, Pauling, and Red Hook Senior Centers are now open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. I do want to clarify, we open at 9, 9 a.m., 
but some people take buses there and the buses don't get you there till about 10 a.m. So just be clear, we're open at nine, but some folks don't get to us until 10. I, got, I had a resident say to me, we don't get here till 10. I said, doesn't mean we're not open, but I understand that you're not here. We're, yeah. not, I mean, we're at 10 a.m. And, uh, uh, and, and, and so we, we've reopened uh, uh, a number of the senior centers. There's a couple that are, that are still closed. We're working out those, uh, those details, and uh, we'll get them uh, open sometime soon. Joe, I have seen you at Dutchess Stadium. We're now at 100% capacity. Yes, what exciting. do you think? I love it. <laughs> I love it that now the Hudson yeah. Valley Renegades are a New York Yankees affiliate. It's great to see people back in the stands. We've done a number of improvements out at the stadium. And it's just great to see families back out there. As a young person who grew up here in Dutchess County, some of my best memories are going out there with friends, family, out to Dutchess Stadium catching a ball game or even a concert. So it is amazing to see everybody. It's back great. Out there. It's a good point. Uh, we had uh, Caroline cannot believe there are so many homeless, hungry, and unemployed hurting families, uh, which uh, is certainly, a, yes. uh, it's been one of our top priorities. Uh, but Joe, she says you, I presume she meant me, is giving uh, a, the largest amount of ARP, the federal rescue money, to baseball. I, I have to say, uh, that is by no definition true. <laughs> uh, 12.5 million uh, we've invested at Dutchess Stadium. Yeah. Uh, and now, the goal of using those dollars uh, was to eliminate debt service. Actually, that $12.5 million use of uh, uh, federal dollars means that we net about $17.5 million in benefit, meaning that uh, we will draw a profit, $600,000 a year. Those $600,000 a year will go to support the programming, uh, Caroline, that, that you're referring to. Yes. We'll be able to invest those dollars into mental health, homeless, uh, and, and, and housing. Uh, and then also, uh, we, we avoid uh, scheduled $2.5 million of, of debt costs, which now becomes open cash uh, flow, if you will, uh, for, for county government. But let me say, um, just as a reference, we're actually uh, dedicating $13.1 million uh, to youth-related services. Uh, and of that, um, and, and above that $13.1 million in federal dollars, uh, we're coming before the legislature to ask for 10 of it to be dedicated today, or next week, yes, next uh, week. for the development of our Youth Opportunity Center uh, as part of a $25 million commitment to build uh, this Youth Opportunity Center, which is very, very critical to our Path to Promise initiative and our commitment to youth services. But additionally, and, and uh, Joe, you know this, uh, we also are dedicating, uh, I think, about $6 million of the total pot uh, to addressing uh, the, the homeless uh, 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 challenge and, and the development of a permanent uh, emergency shelter modeled after the Bergen County, New Jersey model, uh, which is a transitional effort. So you come in and, and by building the relationship with us and the partners, you transition from, you know, sort of basic emergency shelter to something a little bit more sustained and then we move you and, and ultimately the goal is to not only build a uh, emergency shelter, um, but a village. Oh, absolutely. You've heard me talk about this. I'm sure you've listened to every word, but yes. the development uh, of, a, of a housing village where we would transition from emergency shelter to permanent, permanent housing, and then from there individuals can then trans, hopefully transition to homes that they own on their, on their own. And it's a very exciting model uh, that is going to be in, in, you know, very, very costly, but, uh, but by no definition is a majority of these dollars yes. going to Dutchess Stadium. Uh, in fact, uh, we are using these dollars, these, these federal dollars, as a means of uh, investing in a, in a number of areas and trying to get some return on that investment. Yes. So the cash flow we're able to create from the stadium, we're able then to use to support some other programming as we also build the emergency shelter uh, and address, uh, address the needs uh, of young people. Uh, and that's a very exciting proposal that we'll be presenting uh, next week. And this is in addition to all of the programming and funding that was committed in the 2021 budget yeah. already. Yeah. It was already outlined for homeless, for mental health services increased, mental health services, yeah. stabilization center, so on and so forth. Yeah. So this is something that is of top priority to Dutchess County government, yeah. the legislature, and has been talked about and discussed and planned for yeah. for all these folks. Now. Yeah, I think folks should, should understand that, that we have a lot of moving parts. Uh, some of it is yes. investment in parks, yes. and uh, we are going to be investing at Wilcox, uh, Bowdoin, uh, um, well, and of course, Dutchess uh, Stadium, yeah. Quiet Cove. Yeah. Uh, the two rail trails, we're expanding the, uh, uh, the Duchess Rail Trail to include this urban trail that we're yep. developing. Uh, the creation of the universally accessible Lake Walton Preserve in the town of East Fishkill, those are priorities. We're dedicating some resources there. Uh, housing and housing stability is a priority, which is why we've, we developed the, the one-stop, in essence, yes. the coordinated approach to homelessness. 
Uh, we've developed the, uh, and, and are implementing the emergency shelter proposal. Uh, we are supporting uh, uh, affordable housing and transitional housing countywide, and so that's a priority. Mental health services. There isn't a county in New York that is engaged uh, with as comprehensive response to mental health as we are. Stabilization Center. Now it, uh, we're putting some resources toward a, a mobile unit so we can be out and about the community to pro provide those services. And again, the Youth Center, uh, a very powerful tool in providing assistance to young people countywide. And I think you'll be, uh, I think you'll be quite surprised with the breadth uh, of, uh, of what it is we hope to achieve. So those are uh, uh, good comments, I accept them. Uh, Deborah wanted us to know that she is going to miss these informative and enjoyable meetings Joe, I, 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 you know, she probably only saw you once, so I don't know if she missed you, but uh, um, she misses you. you <laughs> she missed me. Deb, I'll miss you too, but we'll be back yes. uh, live and uh, we'll have our town hall meetings. But I do appreciate it. She says there were light in the dark for a very long time. The good news is we are through the darkness and we're enjoying Absolutely. challenges, but enjoying uh, some some of the light. Uh, Joe, um, we are launching our Learn, Play, Create yes. branch program. Yes. Uh, this is three million dollar grant program for uh, smaller not-for-profits. When we say not-for-profit, um, not the traditional ones we do business with. Um, what are you thinking? Well, it's rather our little league organizations, soccer clubs, libraries, you know, arts groups, groups arts theater groups. clubs. Yes, the ones that directly work with our youth here in Dutchess County. Yeah. And and were really severely impacted last year. The goal of the Learn Play Create grant is to say to those smaller organizations, if you've got if you had kids that lost those moments, those opportunities, those those experiences and, and you were set back because you weren't able to raise the money, you couldn't pay your you know, couldn't couldn't bring in uh, admission fees or, or registration fees, uh, we want to help. If you had some deterioration of a facility like a yes. dugout that needs yes. a repair yes. or uh, maybe set design uh, uh, for for a play that you're working on, uh, we want you uh, to apply. Now, I understand that you uh, already told everybody in the town of Wappinger to apply. I sent out a mass email to our Little League, our soccer club, uh, the library, you know, as many youth organizations as possible, hoping that they reach out and, and apply for this grant. I right. really do hope that they can. This is a direct dollars to children. Yeah, it, and it is. So there are three categories, funding for arts programs, libraries, and athletic programs, or, or you know, uh, sports related. Yes. And sports is a wide term. Sports yes. can be um, some of the things we teach here, like the outdoor uh, experience, and, and it could be soccer or baseball oh, or football absolutely. as well. Uh, so uh, uh, organizations uh, for the athletics and arts can apply for up to $20,000. Uh, libraries can apply for up to $50,000, only one grant request per organization. Uh, we announced this as part of the Duchess Invest initiative, and the guidance now uh, and subsequently the applications are available, will be available at duchessny.gov. So visit duchessny.gov uh, to get that guidance, and we want to get folks applying. Um, the, the priorities are established through the work we do with our youth council and other providers. The planning department's responsible for the management of the grant. Uh, they, they, they simply manage the process. Yes. Uh, so we do encourage you to apply. We encourage you to spread the word. Uh, if you're some, if you're, like I said, if you're an art organization that does summer art program or uh, after school programming, if you're not for profit and you need to buy pens, pencils, paper, and paint, and, and you don't have the resources to do it, apply. Yes. Uh, so this apply. is a good opportunity uh, for organizations uh, to do that as well. Uh, we have a question from Karen Jones. I'm sorry? The that, oh, that's a great question. We have a resident. This is like the first time in a long time we have a resident with us. Thank you. Um, it's, an, it's a rolling uh, grant application. So we're going to, uh, the planning department's going to look at them in batches as they come in. And when the dollars are done, the dollars are done. But we didn't want to put a firm deadline because we know that there are organizations that, you know, need some time and likely will have different programming later uh, in the summer, summer months. So good question. Thanks for asking. Um, I do. Uh, Karen Jones asked, "Does anyone know if there are fireworks this year? What are fire fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> fireworks? Fireworks? I like that. <laughs> fireworks? I'm not really doing it. Um, uh, so uh, the short answer is uh, we do. <laughs> Dutchess Stadium is hosting yes. fireworks yes. on uh, uh, the third of July. Yes. Uh, a, uh, you can watch uh, a movie on the on the big screen, yep. and then there's fireworks that evening on the third. Uh, and then there are communities across Dutchess County yes. that are hosting. Any fireworks in Wappinger? Actually, the village of Wappinger. I mean, I mean the, the pyrotechnic kind, not oh, the yes. political <laughs> or the personal kind. Yes, uh, the village of Wappinger Falls actually this year is celebrating their 150th anniversary. 
So is that going to be next weekend? That is going to be July 10th okay. at Veterans Park on Mazir Avenue in the village uh, over the Wappinger Lake. So even if you're not in the town of Wappinger, Village Wappingers Falls, you might be driving through Poughkeepsie, driving along Route 9, you might see a fireworks display, but that is going to be happening then. I highly recommend that you check out the village's Facebook page. They have a lot more information there. Okay. And so there are a number of towns who are hosting fireworks the weekend of the 4th of July, yes. Independence Day. Yes. Uh, a couple things we should probably say. One, go out and have fun. Yes. Uh, celebrate. Uh, of, of course, we understand the, the, uh, the, the significance of this holiday, the, the, the official birth date of the American experiment yes. uh, with the signing of the Declaration. Uh, which uh, I know you weren't there for, um, but I know that as a as a historian yourself, you have an appreciation for Dutchess County's role Absolutely. in the signing of the independence, uh, the, uh, 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 the writing of the Declaration, but then also the establishment of the Constitution. Yes, and, and the country. Do you have anything you want somebody to know I, about Dutchess County's history and Independence Day, Joe? I mean, it, I'm just, testing you. <laughs> well, Dutchess County as a whole, um, specifically Southern Dutchess. That's where I specialize my my knowledge, but Southern Dutchess was very significant in the creation of the country as a whole. Uh, you had Fishkill, which Fishkill and Poughkeepsie were early capitals of New York State. Yeah. Uh, the Fishkill Supply Depot that was established down between Fishkill, East Fishkill and Wappinger, where George Washington established a significant supply depot and encampment. Yeah. Uh, really, uh, the, the events that took place here in our county led to the ultimate cre creation of the United States of America. Yeah. And we had some great patriots here in our county, you know, like Jacobus swore out. Oh, Lumpeter. very, very, yes. very popular. Yes, very, very, very popular. Very, very, very popular. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he, he worked yeah. very closely with Marquis de Lafayette and others. So. Okay, fair enough. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, the ratification of the Constitution. Yes, which took place on Market Street in, in City of Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Alexander Hamilton was there and yeah. others, but very significant, very significant. Yeah. yeah. We might have to get you back, Joe. I think we should uh, have a full, full, a full meeting on, on uh -huh. local history. Me, uh -huh. you, and Dr. Will Tatum. Yes. Uh, it'll it'll be god awful boring, but... Uh, <laughs> No, we're no, trying to make it exciting. We're <laughs> talking about the Wappinger Tea Party and things like that. You know? I think it'd be great. Let's let's yes. figure that out. We'll, yes. we'll have we'll do one of these town halls. We'll talk a little bit about history. We'll get you get you back, Joe. You were you distinguished yourself as the the youngest historian in the history of America. <laughs> At twelve years old, I was appointed to the office of the Town of Wappinger Town Historian's Office. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I love I love history. I love history, and I love my town. <laughs> we'll start out with, I, I want to get back to questions, but what got you involved in history as a twelve-year-old? Well, what started out as a, a love and passion for history developed into a love and passion for my town. So, with that, as a elementary school student, yeah. uh, I always uh, thought it was fascinating to do some side research on uh, local history, especially the significant history down Fishgill, Wappinger, so on and so forth. And actually, when I was going through some old family photo albums, we found this picture, my great, great uncle hunting in a place called Swordatville, oh. which is actually my neighborhood in the town of Wappinger, uh, which was an unrecognized hamlet in the town. And I went before the town board at 12 years old uh, to recognize that hamlet, to formally erect signs at the entrances to the hamlet. And a few weeks later, a former supervisor, Barbara Gutzler, actually, uh, invited me in and, and uh, gave me an honorary position within the office of the town historian and my office in town hall. And I've been working for the Wappinger Town government uh, for nine years now yeah. uh, in a number of different capacities. I still fortunately hold the, the uh, position of town historian, uh, but I also work within the town government as aide to the supervisor and town board on a number of different topics. Very good. And so, Joe, you know, a long time ago, I was... Um do you know this? I, I know that, um, I don't know if you know this, I, I was the youngest elected official yes. in the state. I was actually the youngest mayor in America, George. Yes, you were. Yes. But, but since, uh, since being the youngest mayor, uh, there have been younger mayors. Yes. Uh, Joe, has anybody under 12 <laughs> been, been appointed uh, a historian, as far as you know? I, I don't believe so. Uh, we've done a lot of research on this before officially stating that I am the youngest. Uh, but across the country, there never is younger. No, there has not been. So you still unless, hold the distinction. Yes, unless a municipal government decides to appoint an 11-year-old to public office, uh, which I would, you know, you'd welcome. Well, I would. You know, we need to get young people more involved. I mean, that that's a crucial thing, and that's what our youth center is going to do too. Oh, yes. If they create more like you, we may want to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yes yes uh, I am uh, Joe um, uh, one of uh, one of your friends Teresa Teresa Braschetti yes uh, messaged Braschetti us yes. uh, 
Perfect. Okay, we'll get to that too. Teresa, Teresa Bruschetti uh, wanted us to mention uh, another activity serving young people. Yes, yes. And, and I'm going to let you uh, first talk a little bit about the Town of Wappinger Challenger League. Yes. What, what, what should, well, I mean, the county helped uh, with yes. resources to build the Challenger field. But Absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, but actually, going off of Mrs. Bruschetti's point, uh, her daughter Bettina actually gave, came before the Wappinger Town Board uh, many years ago, actually, before I got involved, uh, to create a multi-purpose field for, for individuals with physical and developmental uh, and, uh, disabilities. And ultimately the town of Wappinger in partnership with Dutchess County government was able to allow Bettina's dream to become reality and, and truly uh, become uh, an amazing asset in Dutchess County and the town of Wappinger. We have this beautiful field out at a Robinson Lane baseball complex where children and uh, hopefully eventually adults uh, will be able to uh, play well, baseball. They actually play every Sunday. I think they just wrapped up their season this year, last Sunday. Uh, but every year I try to go out and watch a game. And it's just amazing to, to watch these kids go out there and have the opportunity to play baseball. Go out there to play with their friends and their peers and, and really be part of something. Uh, if, if you haven't gone out to our Tano Wappinger Challenger Field, Inspiration Field, yep. as it's it, it's called now. I highly recommend. That. I know that the Lagrange Challenger Program also uses the field as well, uh, but it is a tremendous asset yeah. to the town. And uh, you know, I'm very thankful to the Bruschetti family. They know that, and uh, I hope they do at least. And Tano Wappinger Little League and all the volunteers well, out there. We are very yes. thankful to them, and it's a real example of how one person can truly make a big difference. A young person too. Yeah. She was she was in high school, I yeah. think, when she yeah. pushed this forward. And, and so when people ask, though, when, uh, you know, about the county investing money, this is actually one of the things we invested in. Um, uh, Julie's Jungle in East Fishville invested in, uh, and, and so many more. Millions upon millions of dollars invested in, in universally accessible playgrounds, uh, pedestrian access, things of that nature. And actually going off of that, uh, the town of Wappinger just applied for in Dutchess County, awarded a restroom facility to go in addition to this Challenger field. Yeah. So we are very- you, Accessible. Yes, accessible. Yeah. Accessible with even adult changing tables too, yeah. which is something that's very significant. Yeah, you know, it's 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 interesting. When when our planning department started reviewing these these grant applications, they'll tell you they didn't understand. I mean, listen, a, a bathroom with an air conditioning seems like a, seems like a luxury, yeah. but when you explain that people with disabilities, uh, parents or those living with disabilities are likely in that bathroom for 30 minutes instead of perhaps the few moments that you and I might come in and out, you begin to recognize the value of having good quality air ventilation, the air conditioning necessary, and the changing tables yes. for larger uh, children and, and adults. Yes. And so making those uh, things available, I mean, let's face it, they're costly, yeah. uh, but they have a much, much, uh, they have a great return uh, on that investment. And Teresa wanted us to know uh, that if you're interested in playing yes. in the fall 2020 or spring 2021 Town of Wappinger Challenger Field, uh, registration is uh, underway for the fall season right now. Do you know where they do that? Is the Town of Wappinger I website? Believe it, I believe it's on online on the Little League's website, oh. or you can, for more information, check out Wappinger Challenger League on Facebook. Just call Joe. Or call No, Joe. no. <laughs> um, we're going to get to Kia in a moment, who's here with us. She had a question or a comment uh, here. Thank you for being here. Christine online asked, who do we contact to know more about policies, school policies for next year? I assume we're referring to the COVID-related policy. If that is the case, you should communicate with your school board. Uh, and your school superintendent. Currently, uh, the expectation currently is uh, that there, there, there shouldn't be any known, known restrictions. Uh, the state has said that they, they're not pursuing mandatory vaccinations, although, again, we want to monitor that and you want to, you want to be aware of that. Um, and based on what we know, if the positivity rates remain as low or, or lower, uh, the, I would say even the governor will eliminate the mask requirement for the fall school year, but you need to communicate with your school superintendents. There's no coordinated uh, set of guidance except the one governor's order, which is actually a health department order, uh, New York State Health Department order, uh, at the governor's direction on masks for school settings and a few other areas. But you should communicate with your school superintendent and school boards uh, to see what policies they may have in effect. Um, but the Dutchess County Health Department is, is not imposing any restriction. Uh, we are treating now COVID-19 as we do other communicable diseases, meaning if there's a flare-up or an issue in a particular location or otherwise, we would respond with the appropriate protocols for that instance, okay? And we do this for communicable diseases uh, all the time. 
Kia, yes. what would you like to say? You might have to speak up a little bit. Uh, so they can hear me though. Well, I'll repeat what you have to say either way. I would like to make an appeal to the residents of Dutchess County. And it's in regard to our largest food pantry, which has uh, an unfortunate situation. A freezer problem. Uh, no. Oh, not that one? No, it is a walk-in cooler, a cooler, so it's cooler. not freezer, but regular refrigeration. And it, uh, it has malfunctioned completely. Uh, the building was originally the, uh, the um, Polish Community Center. I believe, um, uh, looking at GIS, it was built in 1968, so I'm assuming the cooler was also built in 1968, and it's now malfunctioning. So the location is? Uh, 19 North Bridge, uh, just just beyond Main Street, and it's just adjacent to the IRS building's parking lot. If you know where that is, I do. So night again, but the name of the pantry is is uh, Trinity Temple. So Trinity Temple Food, food pantry, pantry has had a major malfunction with their walk-in cooler. Walk -in I will tell you, they contacted my office just before I got here today, or maybe you did. Yes. Okay, and so I will offer that we are trying to find a temporary solution, although we don't have one yet, maybe a vehicle or truck that could be used in the interim. Uh, but you're correct, you're asking folks if they can uh, donate. Yes, any, in any way possible, just to be aware. Um, one of the ideas might be if we could find uh, dry ice to make the, 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 the walk-in cooler functional until it's repaired. Sure. Another idea might be that um, there might be a refrigerator truck that could be used perhaps Tuesday picking up food and then de the delivery date is every Wednesday. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Uh, Janie Busby is the person who runs the, uh, the food pantry. And okay. Takes care of everything. I'm not, I'm not being rude, I'm actually responding um, uh, from my office. They're yes. trying to find someone that may be able to loan a, a vehicle. And, and I just mentioned perhaps maybe there's an electrician that may want to take a look at it and provide some assistance. Yeah. Uh, they've had two quotes, but as you know, that whole process takes a while. Yeah. This is a food pantry that is open normally from 10 to 3, but this Busby's heart is so large that she's frequently opening at, at 9 and yeah. going, you know, there's many people, especially our first responders and like fish workers, and, and, and they they are working from seven to three, so they can't get there. Right yeah, now. for sure. So she's still open and closing up, and all asking, are there cookies? Yeah. Are there are there children? Bring out the juices. Bring yeah. the, So she's just. Lovely, and we don't want to overtax. No, I agree. Is there a contact number or email that folks, so if you're watching and you want to be helpful to Trinity Temple, it's one of our largest food pantries in the county. I'm going to ask her to, to contact your office. Okay, fine. We'll make sure I to think push that's the that most out. efficient way to do it because you will be the most uh, up to date about what's going okay. on. Okay, so but if you are watching and you, you, you know of uh, the Trinity Temple uh, food pantry and you want to be of some help, Please do try to reach out to them directly. We'll try to get you some contact information, but they do have a major malfunction with their walk-in cooler, and uh, we want to be we want to be helpful. So if you're watching and can be helpful, please step up. And there's one other possibility. Um, our young people used to be delivering food to seniors. Yeah. So perhaps there's someone who has a mobile truck or or some sort of vehicle that could make those deliveries because our young people are now uh, some are in Department of Labor. Yeah. Or so they're not available. Okay. So, so you're looking for volunteers and you're looking for someone to assist with the uh, walk-in cooler issue. Yes. We'll put the word out. Well, we are putting the word out. Yeah. Uh, and we'll encourage people to reach out and we'll see what we can come up with to be helpful. Thank you. Sir. Thanks. I, Thank I you. give you a lot of credit for finding your way down here. I, somebody else said to me they were coming. There. I'm coming to your meeting. I'm coming to your meeting. They didn't show up. It wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. But thank you for being here, and thanks for sending that. And, and, and we did. It's funny. Just before you got here, I did receive an email saying uh, that we were trying to find a, a truck. So thanks for mentioning that. Uh, with that, we are at uh, 359. Uh, this is the last hour, the last minute of, uh, of what, what has been um, uh, uh, 74 <laughs> town hall meetings since the onset of the pandemic. Um, Joe, I'm, I'm grateful to the members of the legislature, Republican and Democrat, over the course of the last year and a half, who've been very, very helpful uh, in responding. I know you all did your own work in your own communities, and we're grateful for that. Uh, but to Dutchess County residents, all of you, um, it has um, uh, certainly been among the most challenging uh, times, well, in all of our lifetimes. Uh, but I will say that we are very grateful, uh, not only for your resilience, uh, but in many ways for your kindness. 
You know, I don't mind when somebody writes a message and says, oh, that's bogus or you guys stink. That's okay. I get it. People like to, uh, uh, certainly on, on social media platforms, uh, we tend to be a little more casual, a little more bold in our language. But I can tell you overall, um, whether, whether it's that kind of thing, uh, all, all who have communicated or participated with us, there have been moments of great anxiety, but people have found ways to get through it. And our residents, I truly, I, I truly feel, um, you know, mean well. Yes. And, and worked hard and rose, and rose to the occasion. And if you're watching thinking, well, they're not solving the problem I want them to solve, continue to speak out. We want to hear from yes. you. Uh, you may have some ideas. Kia came down and gave us a few options to try to help with a, with a food pantry, but you may have some ideas uh, and some <laughs> solutions to problems that we didn't think about. We're always, we're always willing to listen. Uh, we can't always be, do it exactly the way you want us to. Sometimes there's some <laughs> restrictions to that, uh, but we want to be helpful. Uh, we want to be responsive. And I think the last 20 months have, if, 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 have taught us anything, have taught us that we are all in this together in some way. Meaning, we like it, we don't like it, uh, but, but the impact is on all of us in some way, and we have to find a way to confront those problems, those challenges, uh, and overcome those obstacles uh, together. And we will only do that by, by working together and listening to one another, and I'm grateful that you've listened to me uh, for 74 occasions uh, since March of 2020 when we began these town hall forums. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you uh, the very best and safe Independence Day. If you're shooting off some of your own legal fireworks, <laughs> do that safely. Uh, make sure you have the ability to spay, you know, keep good distance, keep kids away from them. Uh, make sure you're prepared to hose them down. We encourage you simply to watch one of those great fireworks displays across Dutchess County. Celebrate Independence Day with friends and family uh, safely. But I do wish you the very best uh, this Independence holiday. Uh, and as we get through the summer months, we encourage you to take advantage of the great assets, parks, facilities all throughout Dutch. It could be your local town. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, could be a count act, uh, it could be a county uh, park or activity. And uh, we look forward uh, to getting together again in the fall for another round of town hall meetings uh, and uh, discussing whatever may be on our agenda at that moment in time. But with that, uh, if there's a reason to reconvene for a COVID-19 update, we will tell you. Please join me in saying thank you to our American Sign Language interpreters who have been with us uh, these 20 months as well, to the communications team at Dutchess County Government, to our IT department, uh, OCIS, uh, and to all of you. Uh, we're exceptionally grateful. Thank you. Uh, be safe, stay healthy, and be kind to each other.